What's up my friends? Welcome back. You're watching half video order stuff. You've just got yourself a Sony a7 IV. Congrats. Now I want to help you get the most out of it and help you set it up to be a brilliant video camera. Before we dive in, if you find this video helpful, if it saves you time, if it speeds up your workflow, if it has a positive impact on you in any way, consider supporting this channel on my Patreon. It's a non-profit thing, the idea being that any funds from Patreon I throw back into the channel to buy gear, review it, and then I give it away to you guys. Buying gear like the a7 IV gets really expensive, so this is just a really elegant solution to improve my content, and you get the opportunity to win some awesome gear. So it's win-win. Just to be clear, these setup tips are based on the video side of things and not stills. The only things that I've done when it comes to stills is change the format to RAW only, and I've duplicated the way that I've customised the buttons. I also did a full review of the video side of this camera recently, which obviously you should check out and I'll pop it up here and down there. This first one could be the most important setting that you change if you shoot any video with this camera, and that's to change the switch off temperature to high. If you don't, it's very likely that after a short period of time, the a7 IV will give you an overheating warning and switch off, which is incredibly frustrating. The very first time I shot some video with the a7 IV, it switched off after about 22 minutes. After I changed the switch off temperature to high, it ran for about an hour and 50 minutes until the battery died. It makes me wonder why Sony bothered including this in the first place. I mean, the last thing they want is cameras melting or catching on fire, right? I should also say that this doesn't necessarily guarantee that it won't overheat. I have heard of people getting only nine minutes of record time, and that's after switching to the higher switch off temperature. Next is to customize the buttons, and I don't know about you, but I find Sony cameras out of the box to be not that intuitive, so the more that we can get those custom buttons under our fingers where they're most useful, the better. So custom one, I've got set as a focus magnifier. Custom two is my white balance. Custom three goes to my menu, which we'll go into in a minute. The last two significant customized buttons I have is the custom four slash trash can button, which goes to the picture profiles and rotating the wheel changes my ISO. It's exactly the same way as I've got my a7S III set up, so I know I've got that fast workflow if I'm switching between cameras. This is obviously a really personal thing, so you do you. As for the My Menu function, I highly recommend you get this set up. The way that I use it is I've filled it with functions that I, de I definitely wouldn't want assigned to a button, but I use frequently enough. I've got mine set up so that I can easily access Finder and Monitor, File Formats, Movie Settings, and of course to Format Cards. The last thing I've added is to toggle to the Super 35 mode. Now I got a roasting from you guys for not mentioning it in my review, and honestly, because I don't use it that often. However, it's a really cool feature that gives you a 1.5 times crop whilst retaining that 4K resolution so that you can use APS-C lenses or just use it to get extra reach from your full frame lenses. For example, the lens that I'm using right now, the Sony 20mm f1.8, turns into a 30mm f2.7 equivalent. Okay, I'm cheating a bit. I'm shooting on my a7S III, which doesn't have that Super 35 mode, so I've just cropped, but you get the idea. Of course, don't forget that whenever you crop a little bit, you lose a bit of light, you gain a bit of noise, you lose a bit of background blur compared to the equivalent lens that you could use instead. I mean, this is a real 35mm lens, and I'll throw it beside the example I just showed. Uh, I've got it set to f2.8 to get the, the nearest equivalent, but of course, this is a Sigma art lens, so it goes to f1.4, which looks like this. And there it is at f1.4, crazy background blur. Kind of like it though. Do you prefer my videos like this? Let me know. I almost exclusively shoot in S-Log3 with my Sony cameras, so for me, turning on the gamma assist function is a must. It shows you roughly what your footage could look like once it's had a conversion lookup table applied, whilst still capturing that nice flat footage. This makes it easier to see what's happening in your scene, to judge your exposure and check the colours are looking good. Next, we're setting up our video settings and the a7 IV is quite simple really. Assuming most people are going to shoot in 4K, there are three codecs that you can choose from. XAVC HS, which gives you video that's compressed with the 
H.265 codec, which is the most efficient and will give you the smallest files, but will be the slowest to edit of these three. XAVC-S, which uses H.264 and is less efficient, which means slightly larger file sizes and much more manageable editing speeds. Finally, we have XAVC-SI, which is an all eye format, so it captures an image for every frame rather than using a codec to compress your footage. The files will be significantly bigger again, but should run quickly when editing. I use the middle ground XAVC-S as I find it a really good, just happy medium. The next thing to do, which is a must, is to switch on on the new breathing compensation. This is a brand new feature from Sony and it's incredible. It will actually correct for any kind of focus breathing from your lens. If you're thinking, what is this guy talking about? Well, breathing is where your field of view changes depending on your focal point due to using lenses that are designed for photography rather than video, and video guys hate this, so this feature is amazing. Unfortunately, it only works with Sony lenses and there will be a small crop. Next, I wanna make sure that my exposure and picture profile settings differ between video and stills mode so that when I transition from one to the other, it's just seamless. I mean, you wouldn't want to be out shooting video in S-Log3 and then need to take a photo because, you know, your ISO is going to be at 800, your, you'll be in the wrong picture profile and your shutter speed will be at 50th of a second. Switching over to stills, you'll have to change all of those and that takes time and no one needs that. So to tweak these, you need to go into menu, setup, operation, customize, different set for still slash movie and select which setting you want to differ between the two modes. I've got it set so that the aperture, shutter speed, ISO and picture profile are different. Remember the a7 IV is designed to be a hybrid and this is one of the keys to unlocking that fast hybrid workflow. Now it's time to wrap up everything we've learned in this video so I can give you a doggy bag of tips. Firstly, change that temperature shut off warning to high or you may have that incredibly frustrating thing of your camera overheating and ruining your shot. Get all of the amazing functionality that the a7 IV has under your fingers where they're most comfortable and speed up your workflow. And whilst you're doing that, set up my menu and fill it with the things that you need fairly often but don't require assigning to custom buttons. Turn your prime lenses into dual focal length lenses. By setting up the Super 35 mode, I actually put that in my menu these days. It's just super handy. Be sure to enable the gamma assist if you use the S-Log2 and S-Log3 modes. That way you can keep an eye on your contrast and colors. Choose the codec option which suits your workflow the best. Do you go for super efficient files which are slower to edit or less efficient files which just let you edit quickly and smoothly? I'm a really big fan of the new breathing compensation so I recommend you switch it on. Next is to make sure that your movie and still settings differ when you switch between them. This is just really great for a good hybrid work Workflow. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you're feeling good about the setup of the video features of your a7 IV. I want to hear from you. What are other settings that just have to be changed from factory defaults? I mean, I didn't mention things like zebras, but you know, that's a whole other thing and I think it deserves its own dedicated video. I've got a large archive of videos about videography of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.